as they, they use heating oil for their homes. How would this um, sort of tax structure not burden them? So, so when, when I say that they use more fossil fuels, it's as a percentage of their income. So their energy burden for yeah. low income families is much higher than for other families. Uh, and, and in the structure of this plan, and what we've been working with the planners about is to ensure that low income families are not adversely affected. So they will get a, uh, a tax rebate like everybody else. If they don't uh, have, you know, uh, uh, have to pay taxes, then they, they may get an increase in their state uh, earned income tax credit, or they may get a check from the state. In addition, they would get some kind of additional uh, rebate that might happen on a monthly basis. It may be part of uh, their um, uh, three, uh, SNAP, uh, three, you know, what was uh, food stamps, uh, or it might be part of their uh, fuel benefit. But we're looking for ways that this pollution tax would not adversely affect low-income people, but would also give low-income people the incentive to find ways to save energy. Because there are, you know, all of us, whether you're low income or high income, there's ways that you can save energy. Doing a better job with your thermostat, shutting off your lights, uh, driving lights, all those things. So there isn't sort of the proposal right now is it sort of a uniform rebate or tax credit for, for all incomes. It's presumably going to be tailored towards low income providers. Well again, we're we're going to what we're going to tailor is that for for miners with the lowest incomes that they will be adversely affected. So the the model right here is um, the same. Every adult person in Vermont gets a, a check, for instance, from the government for the same amount, but the lowest income, for instance, the lowest quintile, the lowest 20% would get something on top in addition to that from the state under you know, the, the model that is used here. So I'd like to add some perspective to, to the conversation. Just in this last biennium, uh, we raised the gasoline tax. I mean, I don't even remember how much we raised it, but, but, the, but the outcry was huge. It, it was going to, well, all the questions that the, that the media is asked today, it's, it's going to uh, immediately negatively impact uh, A, B, C, D, e, F, e, F, G. And uh, what have we seen? Vermonters have seen in the past year, our roads are in the best shape that they have ever been in, in the 40 years that I have lived in, 40 plus years that I've lived in, in this state. What is the price of gas today? It is much lower than when we increased the gas tax. Because why? This is my conspiracy theory. <laughs> Fossil fuel companies, they will do whatever they think they have to do to keep people using fossil fuel, which is the heroin of the world. And how will they do that? They will consistently try to drive, if we're not using enough, they will drive down, down the price. That, that's what they're doing now. And as, and as soon as folks start to use and get addicted and hooked again, you watch it, you watch it rise. So this, this kind of incentive is, is not going to cause the end of the world. Just like our increase in the gas tax did not cause the end of the world. I don't know what the statistics were, but I haven't heard from legislators that, that uh, the, the uh, Connecticut River uh, uh, businesses have been substantially any more negatively impacted by, by cross-border trade. And I don't expect that that, that would happen uh, with this initiative. You also, although uh, Representative Klein says the prices have come down in recent months um, on gas and fuel oil, but if you look back over 10 years, it's much higher than it was, but we got nothing for it. You know, it lined the pockets of, of giant fossil fuel companies out there. Any increase in the cost of fossil fuels that would result from this program helps Vermonters explicitly. The dollars are coming back to Vermonters in other ways that benefit jobs, benefit the economy, or provide incentives to get people off of fossil fuels. So it's a, it's a tremendous benefit, any increase that we do see in fossil fuels um, to the state. That's, that's what the economic analysis has done. I could add to this point. Um, 
we have we have a modeling results which gives us some some foresight into what 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 might happen with the with the carbon pollution tax. But we have hindsight. We have British Columbia since 2008, Quebec a much smaller carbon tax since 2007, the city of Boulder, um, nation states like uh, Finland, Sweden, Norway, um, the UK, uh, Denmark since the early 1990s. Okay, so over two decades of experience in those cases. So we have the hindsight to see that when the tax is done right, when you use the income to reinvest in your, your economy, especially to clean energy, and when you use the income to, uh, to deal with some of the more regressive side of the tax impacts, which is exactly what British Columbia has done, then you get improved economic performance, better equity of, of amongst income earners, and reduced carbon pollution. So this is not like a secret. This, is, this has been happening for some time now. Thank you.